Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. Today we're going to explore Zim on multiple canvases. Woo! We had a request from one of our Slack team members. So let's take a look at some examples out on the Zim site now, zimjs.com. And what we'll do is we'll go into the About section. Hey there, Dr. Abstract, scroll on down, and a couple of the older Zim sites used multiple canvases. So let's take a look. Here's Zim Try. This is in the archive section. And there's one Zim canvas up here. You can tell it's the canvas. Look, I've just gone off the canvas. So this is embedded uh, Zim in a tag. And you can hit play and start playing around and so forth. And down below here, we have another one. This is a little ad. It's, oh, when you pick up the smiley face, it's sad when it's not on Zim, but it's happy when it's on Zim and you let go and it's all wiggly. Isn't that neat? So a little interactive ad. And up top, we had an interactive logo. There's another interactive logo in the Zim 4th site. There it is. So it made some uh, abstract art and then you can play around with it. And if you want, you can make your own abstract art. Hey, cool. Uh, down below here, if you click next, these are examples of Zim. If you click next, so that's Zim in behind in a tag in behind the HTML. So that's normal HTML. And uh, this button is normal HTML, and it's activating Zim with physics in behind there. Neat, huh? Ooh, this one right here, this box that we're looking at, this is also Zim. So that's showing the Zim particles. Okay, so you've seen examples of embedding Zim. Let's go take a look at some code to do that. We'll close down our browser. We'll explore multiple tags. And indeed, that's how you do it. You put uh, tags down in your HTML. We're in Zim 6.8.2. We're in just in the fit template, but we'll make some adjustments there. Let's see what the fit template looks for, first of all. There she be, a circle dragging around. Now the fit will fit it to the browser window. So as I adjust the, the browser window, it changes like that. There's a couple uh, other ways that you can do that for scaling. And so let's just, in the code section, here are some examples in the Zim frame. It shows you there's the fit template, but there's also the tag. So this is scaling to a tag, and here's scaling to a tag with the width and height. So when you scale to a tag with the width and height, it's very much like the fit template, except it fits it into the tag. If you just scale to the tag without a width and height, then it's very much like the full template, and it just throws, throws it into whatever tag dimension you happen to, to have. So there's an example of that. So as I squeeze that, we're allowing the Zim frame to scale the stage to whatever the tag is. Um, dictating in a sense. Here in the this tag mode when we go smaller like that it um, is keeping the proportion. You see how that is keep it's not scaling the insides of it as we scale smaller everything in there gets smaller much like the fit everything gets in there smaller and all this stuff is HTML. So let's see how we can uh, build that stuff. Here we are uh, first of all, you can go copy that if you want. Those templates would be great. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's put it together ourselves here. We uh, get a little message saying, hey, Zim's going to make a canvas for us. But if we want, we can make our own div. Not a dick, a, not a div, but a div. We can do it. ID is equal to a test like that. And then we will end our div. <laughs> Goodness gracious, <laughs> my typing's not totally on at the moment. I wanted this to be bigger for you so you could see that too. And I was thinking about that as I was trying to type. So there we have a div test. And let's just put a little message here as well. How about an H2 that says multiple canvases. <laughs> Is that it? Multiple canvas I. No. Um, can I? <laughs> End of H2. Yes, exploring the English language as well. Uh, there's our div, and underneath we will put mm, uh, just a paragraph tag that says below canvas. End of P. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, let's put a little bit of styling in here too. Style, no, take this way. Style. And we will say that the body, the body, will have a font dash family of Verdana and a size of, oh, I don't know, 30 pixels and a color of oh, white. All right. Fine, and uh, there. So we've got this div. There's nothing in it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to target the Zim frame to that div using our ID test. So up above here, instead of the scaling being the fit mode, we just put the name of the tag test, and that's this last one, tag ID. So you can scale to fit inside the browser window. You can scale to fit outside the browser window. You can fit the full window, and then you can also fit the canvas to or scale it to a tag ID. And when you do that tag down below, don't make it a canvas, just make it a div. That's fine as a generic tag. I mean, I'm not sure what would happen if you targeted to a canvas, but then it would make a canvas within a canvas and we, we don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that happening. I don't know quite what that would happen there. Um, all right, so great. We're fitting with the same width and height as before. We're fitting to that div. Let's see how it works now. We'll view in the browser. Open in the browser. And there we go. Let's just reduce that a little bit. So multiple canvases. Here's uh, one canvas at the moment. And it's now kept its dimension to whatever we said. So we can, let's make that a little bit smaller, shall we? How about 500, I don't know, 300? Something like that. We might want to, this thing's 100 in radius. Let's drop that down to 50 in radius and uh, check it out. Let me refresh here. There we go. We've got a smaller, well, let's uh, bring that back to normal size then. Control zero. That's normal size. So we've got a smaller canvas now, 500 pixels uh, with some HTML. That's HTML. And there we go. Neat, huh? Um, now, if we make another canvas, let's put another canvas beneath this. You can basically just copy that stuff. So I won't bother with the variables. I'll grab from the frame on down to the end of the frame there. Paste. While we're down here, let's make a second one here. There's a div test. We'll make a div ID test two. This time we could put a width and a height on that. That would be one way to do it. So width of, well, let's make it 500 and a height of equals 200, say. Is that what we did the other one? I can't remember. I didn't mean to make it the same, but what was the other one? It was 500 by 300, so a little bit different. And so now this time, instead, in our second frame, which we do not call frame, why, why would we call it the same variable? Let's uh, call it frame two so that we don't lose, overwrite the access to frame there. So we'll just turn all of these frames do it into frame two. So frame two is a new frame. We won't pass in the width and height and instead of the scaling being the last tag we will put in, hmm, what was it called? Test two. Ooh. So now we're putting in a new frame with no dimensions into test two. And that's the test two tag. What else happens? Let's change, we won't bother changing the outer color again. That's the color outside the canvas. So that would just overwrite the color that I got set last time. Set this to a darker color. Frame dot darker. And we've got a stage width and a stage. Great. And come on down here. All should be good. Uh, let's not make that orange. Let's make it frame dot blue. And indeed, how about make it a rectangle, rectangle, and this can be called rect. Uh, we need a couple more here, so we'll call it um, 50 comma 50 and a blue. So we have a blue rectangle on the second stage, stage, second stage. We're dragging it and we're updating the stage. And let's see what we've got now. I think we got everything in place there. There she be. So now we have a second stage where we're dragging a blue rectangle on a darker thing. It's only 200 high rather than 300 high. And they're both there. But there are some 
um, snags that you might run into. So that's what I wanted to show you next is, is those uh, snags, a little bit of a tricky bits. Okay, and that relates to the default stage, or more particularly the default frames stage. So if you do not specify a stage in a number of places, then it will automatically assume you mean the first frame that was made, its stage. So for instance, we don't have to, and it's just lucky that the template put stage in there, it's the template's a little bit behind in our thinking. Now, if you put circle.center, it will automatically center on the stage. But the question is, is sort of what stage is it centering on? This automatically centers it on the first frame that is made. So no problem. Uh, that will be fine. The circle still gets centered on the first frame that's made. But if down here in the second frame that's made, we leave out the stage, now we're centering the rect that we just made, this rectangle, which is nowhere yet, just in some JavaScript code. And then if we do say rect.center, it has no idea what stage it should put it on, so it puts it on the first frame that was made stage. So even though it's down here in this function, that doesn't matter, it, it still has access to the first frame that was made and it puts it on that stage. This stage.update is the wrong stage to update then. So what happens is our first thing gets made, we add the circle to the stage, we update that stage, great. Down here, this is running after, we make a rectangle, we add the rectangle to the first frame stage and we don't update. We update this, this is the stage that refers to here, the second frame. So just because we have a var stage doesn't mean that this is automatically going to add it to the var stage. It, um, this is calling something with inside Zim. Zim itself has no idea what your local var stage is, but it does know that it can add it to a stage. <laughs> That's what happens. So we won't see it immediately. We refresh. We don't see it immediately. It's gone from here. But watch what happens as we drag this, and that will refresh this stage. There it is. This brought it up to the top, and, and it's fine. We can, isn't that neat? We, from the other function, we can add it to the wrong stage if we want to. So more specifically, this would be equivalent to saying add this to frame.stage. And frame is up here. This is the frame, and here's frames.stage. So that's what we've just done. And if we wanted to really see the update there, we could also update. We could say frame.stage.update. So now we're centering the rect, even though we're in the wrong function, really. We're centering the rect on the other frame. And we're updating the stage of the other frame. So we save that, and now we'll see it right away. So there it is, updated. Okay, before, when we picked up the circle, we, we didn't see this because it, <clears throat> it was sitting there, but we didn't see it because the stage had not updated to show it was on top. When we picked up the circle, we grabbed that and... Uh, Showed, showed up on top like that. Okay, so that means we just need to be aware that um, we can't leave off the stage. When we leave off the stage on a second, uh, in a second frame, it may not put it on the right frame. In fact, it probably won't. So we just need to put the stage in there. When we put stage in there, we're good. Well, what do you think? Okay, so that's that's uh, one of the nuances there is that anywhere there's a default stage, which is also on tickers, for instance. Uh, let's see what happens with animation. So we'll dot animate this, dot animate, round bracket, and we say um, x colon 20. I think this will be fine. So we're going to animate this to an x of 20 in um, two seconds. That'll be a nice slow movement of our rectangle. This will be fine because animate, luckily, even though it ha has a ticker that runs, it will assume that we mean the stage of the object that we are pointing at. So this should work just fine. Now we save that. And refresh and there she goes so that is indeed just fine but tickers in general won't uh, know what they're doing so if we just say hey ticker dot add this function right here and we say rect dot x 
minus minus. So this is just going to take away one from the rectangle's current position. Tickers automatically update the stage. So we save that, we go, great. There's a ticker that's running that is automatically updating the stage, and we should see the rectangle move. And we refresh here. Hey, the rectangle's not moving. The, the ticker, by default, will update the first frames stage, unless you tell it specifically which stage it should update. So the ticker is busy updating this stage, yet we're moving the rectangle here, which may not even be there anymore. I can't even click on it anymore because the rectangle is not really there. The rectangle's way the heck off the stage by now, and here I am trying to drag an old sort of picture of where it was because <laughs> the stage isn't updated. Do you catch that? So we have to tell this ticker, when we add this function, please update this stage. And this is how it used to be. It used to be that every time you added something to a, a ticker, you would have to say which stage to update. Every time you centered something, you would have to say which stage. Every time you center regged, you would have to say which stage. But I got so tired of typing in stage all the time for these things. Most of the time, 95% of the time, we're working on one canvas. So why not just sort of default it to the default, you know, that first frame stage? The issue when dealing with two canvases, and this is what we've been exploring on Zim Explore, the issue is on that second canvas or third canvas, you need to keep track of uh, the stage that you're updating. So you've got to put these things back in. So now if we save that and refresh, refresh, uh, this, the stage that the ticker is updating is that stage, and now <laughs> it's gone. So this is me before trying to drag a rectangle. It's gone, but we didn't see it updated, and I'm clicking here, and it's no longer there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? This has been a Zim Explore here with Dr. Abstract. I hope you've uh, enjoyed taking a look at how to make two canvases or more in Zim. All the best. Have a great day. Ciao.